Last summer, I left my job. I was working here in Dallas for a hospital, a children's hospital, doing finance. I was really good at what I did. You know, it was um, it was all good. You know, good money. Um, I had friends and stuff, but I I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was living in my truth. And towards the end, I was feeling like I was almost faking faking being in my job and doing all that and it came to the point where I just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore and I I left it and I started my business which I dedicate completely to now which is woman healing and this business is focused on awakening the feminine energy And this is not just in women, but the feminine energy is also in men. And so many times when I say awaken the feminine, people think, oh, feminism or going from one extreme to the other. And when I say awaken the feminine, I just mean bring things to a balance because we've been running on on the masculine programming for so, so long, for hundreds of years. So the awakening of the feminine will just bring things back to a balance. Welcome to Her Drive Podcast, a female-focused interview series with women of the world discussing their road trips to success. I'm your host, Cindy Cramblatt, a travel expert, business owner, and curious spirit with a knack for meeting fascinating women. Please join me as I hop in the passenger seat and chat with these ambitious women about what drives them, twists and turns, and those pedal to the metal moments. Let's drive. Hello, 2023 Her Drive listeners. It's a brand new year and it's been a challenging one for me. For the listeners, I have not been on my two-week schedule. I took some time off for personal reasons. My poor little camper van was totaled in an accident at the start of the new year and there was a lot of spiritual breakthroughs that came because of the accident, funny enough. So I just needed some time to cocoon and come back out of my shell. But alas, here we are. Thanks for sticking with her drive. I'm really excited about today's guest, Nicole Cruz. I met her in 2022 at a woman's circle that she was facilitating in Dallas. And it was such a beautiful circle of women. A few of my girlfriends joined me and I learned things about them that I didn't know. Of course, you know, just had this beautiful heart opening space with so many women that I didn't know. And it was just such a beautiful place of vulnerability and a wonderful container that Nicole created. She's the founder of Woman Healing. Uh, it's an online community that promotes shadow work, the feminine energy awakening, and the discovery of higher self through multiple practices and healing mediums. So without further ado, hello, Nicole. How are you? Hi, good morning. And thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me and just giving me the opportunity to share a little bit here in, in this space that you have created. I am I feel honored and this is my first time ever um, being in a podcast. So I feel like it's very special for me. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited that you're here. And it's not unusual for ladies to be first timers on her drive. I have this wonderful knack to meet fascinating ladies. And my passion is sharing your stories. And that's just how I like to give back to to humanity at this point in time is just to share the beauty of your journey. And, and yeah, it's just such an honor to have you. I was really impacted by the work that we did at your circle. And it's just so great that we can share a bit more about um, what you do and what your mission is. Yeah, you know, and as you was, as you were um, introducing me and talking about that circle, I could see, I could see like in my mind a little bit of like a replay, like a movie of, of that moment, which was also super special for me. Um, every circle, Every women's circle that I facilitate is special, definitely. All the women bring their own special energy and and spice. But 
that weekend specifically, I remember it very clearly. It was in August and I held two circles that weekend and it was such an expansive time for me. Um, it was only two months after I had left my corporate job and it was a very, very memorable moment. And I remember us dancing in that circle, which was so wild. I don't think I had ever done anything like that. So I, I treasure that specific circle in a very special, special way. Mm, that's beautiful. Wow. Well, so thank you. Yeah, <laughs> no, it, it was, thank you. It's, uh, it's cyclical, these things, so. Um, well, Nicole, I like to first start with, you know, what the heck is your story? I know you're from Puerto Rico, um, but you haven't always been um, leading women's circles and not working a corporate job. So can you kind of walk me through um, the genesis of your story and up until now, what you've been up to? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, as my teacher always says, our story is our medicine, and um, my story, hmm, where to begin even? <laughs> I, I was this little girl that always did the right thing and always followed the rules, never the rebel, never, never the one in problems in school or anything like that. I have a younger sister, and she, she was that. Um, that one <laughs> who never, never wanted to do what we were told. But for me, it always was super easy to follow the rules, follow the one, two, three, follow the steps that I was told would get me to what, I don't know, people call success and feeling, um, feeling fulfilled and feeling happy with my life. And as it turns out, the one, two, three didn't um, work out quite as I <laughs> as I thought it would. And so let me see where to start. I can start in college. I went into college wanting to be a doctor. And this has always been part of my being. This um thirst of serving others has always been part of my life. As a child, I would rescue animals all the time, like birds, dogs, cats, whatever it was, I would always rescue them. My mom would not like this at all. Um, so I went into college really, really sure that I wanted to become a doctor. And through the first two, three years, I started developing this lower back pain that was excruciating. and. Long story short, when I finished my third year, I decided that I didn't want to continue um, going through um, the like the pre-med preparation because in my mind, I thought it was my lower back pain was too much sitting, too much studying, and I decided to switch and I switched to accounting. My best friend at that time was doing accounting. Most of my family that has gone through college were accountants or were in that business field. And I don't know, two plus two was four. And for me, it was what I needed to do. Definitely not a decision made rooted in my intuition, but rather made um, based on my environment, my external environment. And so I went and I did accounting. I completed my CPA and I started working as an accountant. And I did that for six years. And in the summer of 2022, so last year, we can say, I left that job. And before I, I continue going forward, back, I'm going to pull back a little bit to 20, 2013 when I left um, pre-med and started accounting. I also discovered yoga and that definitely changed my life. Um, and I wanted to continue that path. You know, I didn't want to complete my my bachelor's. I just wanted to 
leave everything and dedicate my life to teaching yoga. But at that time, my my family pressures um, pushed me to continue. And so I finished, started working in accounting in Puerto Rico. I, I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. And but I could never find fulfillment in any of the jobs that I had there in Puerto Rico. And so in 20, whoa, 20 what? 2019, I moved to Dallas. And um, I don't know how deep we want to go in here. But um, at that time, I was with someone, my ex-partner. And I was just buried in this um, relationship and I had forgotten about myself and I had forgotten about my dreams and I had forgotten about who I truly was. And while also struggling with chronic pain, I separated myself completely from the spiritual world. And... I was here in Dallas without family, without really many friends, because I inserted myself into his circle. And so it was it was just a phase. And thanks to everything that happened and all the lessons that that relationship gave me is that I am here now. And um Last summer, I left my job. I was working here in Dallas for a hospital, a children's hospital, doing finance. I was really good at what I did. You know, it was um, it was all good. You know, good money. Um, I had friends and stuff, but I I didn't feel I didn't feel like I was living in my truth. And towards the end, I was feeling like I was almost faking faking being in my job and doing all that and it came to the point where I just couldn't I couldn't do it anymore and I I left it and I started my business which I dedicate completely to now which is woman healing and this business is focused on awakening the feminine energy and this is not just in women, but the feminine energy is also in men. And so many times when I say awaken the feminine, people think, oh, feminism or going from one extreme to the other. And when I say awaken the feminine, I just mean bring things to a balance because we've been running on on the masculine programming for so, so long, for hundreds of years. So the awakening of the feminine will just bring things back to a balance. Mm, and that's a lot. <laughs> that's a little bit of my I mean, story. That's, that's, I mean, we could talk for days and days and days about what your, your life story is. Um, um, and that's the beauty of it, right? Is that there is a lot. We go through so many experiences in our lifetime and I, I joke often but it's actually rooted in truth that I've lived at least three lifetimes in this one like this one incarnation <laughs> so far um which is great and I've loved all of these iterations of myself um but again it's a lot but it's made me who I am and obviously your experiences have made you you um but going back into your story a little bit um you discovered yoga um and do you remember what the sensation was or how that altered your life in a way hmm it made me definitely more connected with my body that was one of the big breakthroughs that i had with yoga and the other really, really special thing that I found with yoga was my spiritual path. Um, I, I was raised in, I'm not going to say raised Catholic because I don't feel that way. I don't feel like my mom raised me Catholic. I don't feel like that's true. I did go to a Catholic school for nine years, first grade all the way through ninth grade, but I never felt 
I never felt connected to anything. I never, I was never able to find anything deep in in religion, in Catholicism, or in any other religion. My grandmas are like other religions, and and nothing clicked for me. And when I found yoga, I remember that my teacher would always say, "You can call." You can call God, you can say Buddha, you can you can call whatever name works for you because it's all just one energy, one thing. And we humans use these words and these like images to make sense in our human experience of what it is that, you know, the unseen, to make sense of the unseen. And that just made so much sense to me like it something clicked inside of me and i started learning not just about the yoga postures which were great because i was struggling with this lower back pain from like all the years studying or whatever it was that i don't know yet um so it definitely helped me in in the physical with my physical body to get so much better so much better i had a teacher that was he was very he saw that I was a good student because I would never, again, I was really good at doing things as I was told and I would never miss a class. I was very, I've always, I'm a Taurus. So I've been very disciplined my whole life, um, probably now the least, but I, I would never miss a class. So he saw that I was dedicated and he dedicated to me. He started showing me oils that I could use for my back and all the, that physical aspect. But truly, the biggest breakthrough for me was the spiritual aspect and learning the yamas and niyamas, which are, man, practically the same as the Ten Commandments. But because I was in this open space and receptive, because I was not pressured to say God or do this or do that, I I was able to absorb all of that. And the yamas and niyamas changed my life. And to this day, I follow them. And I, I feel like I am such a better person because of yoga. Mm, beautiful. Beautiful. Now, fast forwarding a little bit through um, your story. Um, you were living in Puerto Rico and relocated to Texas. And I totally relate not totally, but very closely relate to your story in that um, you didn't have family, you didn't know friends here, so you just inserted yourself into his circle um, and you disconnected spiritually. I moved to Texas like three and a half years ago and like met now my ex like the first week or so. And I'm very social. I meet people very easily, but um, it was kind of a similar story. And I never fully disconnected, but there were so many moments where, I mean, through a traumatic, abusive relationship, you finally, like, you lose who you are. And there were so many times where I was totally disassociating with life. And the only things that would really, like, my thread to, like, my self, to humanity, to survival was, like, meditation or prayer. Or if I couldn't even get into that state, it was doing a flow or going out and laying in the backyard and just, like, putting my body on the ground, just feeling my skin against the soil. So whenever um, I was reading a bit more about your profile, um, you'd mentioned like toxic and codependent uh, dynamic. So is that something that you were experiencing and had to um, extricate yourself from? Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Um I and thank you for sharing um your part of of the story. I relationships are hard, but they 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 tear you open, you know, and they show you all those little parts that you that you need to work on for yourself and and for me, I had to work through a lot. <laughs> Same <system. laughs> that relation. <laughs> yeah. That relationship, um, and thankfully we are now friends and we <laughs> we can see each other and he helps me with our dog that we adopted and all that stuff, but it was definitely very, very tough. Um, 
I never realized that I was codependent until I, until we broke up, basically. And I was like, wow, I was so, so just, just completely, completely ingrained in his life and in his way of doing things. And this was more... I, I don't know for you, but for me, it was more of the social part that I I was ingrained in him, basically. I would always go to wherever he went. And I I didn't know that thing of doing things separately. I wanted to always um, go exercise together and then do clean together in the house and do everything together and now you know after many many processes and many um years of just shedding and deprogramming and understanding also why i was that way i understand that i i was a i was conditioned to be that way you know that's what i learned that's what i saw from people around me from my family and um and also i feel and this i discovered not so long ago that when i met him i was in a very low point in my life because i although i had yoga i was drinking a lot and i now i'm one year sober but i was drinking a lot and and anything that would have to do with alcohol i was there and and he he was the same way you know so we we found each other in a toxic space filled with alcohol which made me and this is not the same for everyone but when i drank alcohol i became this person that i am not but it was that when I became when I became that person, it was easy for me. It was easier for me to relate to others and be fun and be very loud and very outgoing, which is not who I am, you know? And and part of all this process has been honoring who I truly am and knowing that it doesn't matter, you know, what other people think or feel. I, we, we have one job when we come to the earth and it's staying true to who we are and, and rediscovering every day different parts of who we truly are. Um, but yeah, it was definitely, it was definitely hard and definitely, and, and just being here and, and hearing your question, my body felt a lot of resistance to talking about this openly um, because it brings out a lot of suffering also. Mm. <clears throat> well, I appreciate you opening up and, and sharing. I think so many of us can absolutely relate to to that experience in some way. And when you said it, and you didn't realize how codependent you were until you actually were out of the relationship is fascinating to me. Um, and I guess hindsight, hindsight can be 2020 and the beauty of relationships is relationships ending is that you can look back and you can, if you're looking back with a, I think a lens of honesty, as much as you can have to, and, and compassion for both parties, you can see, the behavioral and spiritual things that were going on that may have been really challenging to see at the time and um, start to make modifications or shedding, as you said, right? And it feels really nice to to shed those old behaviors, tendencies, come back to self. And that's what I feel like I've been doing so much of is just shedding and shedding. Um, so whenever you and, and he split up, is that when you um, went back into your spiritual practice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. When we when we broke up, which was in the middle of the pandemic, so this was September of 2020, I went back to Puerto Rico. Um, I I had been living here for I don't know what, um, one year, one yeah, 18 months maybe, 
and when we broke up i i went back it was not like i moved back i went there for like three months i thought i would spend some time with family we lived together so someone had to stay in the apartment and so yeah i i went back to puerto rico and i reconnected with my with one of my spiritual teachers which yes she was and is in the yoga community in Puerto Rico. And as you can imagine, probably the yoga community in Puerto Rico is very small because we are a small island um, with a lot of people because we are, I don't know, three point something million people. But the yoga community is relatively small. So you tend to know many, many of the people in the community. So I knew her. Her name is Beatriz. I knew her from the yoga community. She was also a yoga teacher. But she, very early in her um, life, she had already found this feminine, very feminine path, taking yoga, but also she was um, facilitating women's circles. I believe she was the first person in Puerto Rico to facilitate women's circles. And when I was... Um, in this starting this relationship with my ex-partner the first two years were a freaking hurricane they were so stormy so toxic and so hard that i i was trying to look for help i was really trying and i found as a result of that i found women's circles and i started going to women's circles back in 2017 when i was in those very hard years of that relationship. And when I went back to Puerto Rico after we broke up here in Dallas, I reconnected with her. I went to one of her day retreats in January of 2021. Yeah, January of 2021. And then I went to a full weekend retreat in March. And that's where everything changed during that retreat. Everything changed. And I want to I wanna pull back a little bit to, um, to January because um, in January, I went through a sexual abuse. So imagine after breaking up in September of 2020, I went through sexual abuse, which which is all tied. It's all weaved together because I really didn't know how to hold space for myself. So I was looking for someone else to hold space for me, hold me, really. I didn't know how to hold myself. And I am thankful for everything that happened because it brought me to that moment where I was like, no, this, this, I don't know what it is, but it has to stop, you know, it's time to make some big changes. And, and that's where I went to these um, retreats and reconnected with her. And, um, and regarding the sexual abuse, because I know so many women, way more women than no one ever thinks go through this type of experience. I really want to touch on this. For me, it was key to have a safe space to de to decompress and unpack the experience very fast. And and so many people ask me like how do you you see it's easier for me to talk about the sexual abuse than to talk about my relationship because I had that space in January with her. To, to unpack the experience, to talk about what had happened and to have other women in the circle be like, shit, I've, I've gone through the same. You're not alone. And show that amazing support that so many times we think we don't have. So um, that happened and, you know, I was able to process and everything. And then in March, when I went to that other retreat, that's when I saw myself in the seat of my teacher. And I was like, I remember telling one of my friends, she was, she is my friend now. She was not my friend then, but she, my friend in the circle, um, in the closing circle that for that retreat in March, I was like, Lola, I don't know when 
I cannot tell you that I am going to resign tomorrow, like when we get out of this sacred safe space, but I can tell you that I am going to work for that and I'm going to and I'm going to do it at some point. And that was March of 2021. It took me a little more than a year, but but yeah, that's 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 how the circle is, you know? You say things in the circle and you say them out loud and they become a reality. If if they are coming from that very integral and and deep space within yourself. Nicole, for people who have not been to women's circles, can you describe the general format, the intention behind what what it actually entails? A women's circle, and and I don't want to say all women's circles because I realize that more and more we are seeing different um, types of women's circles. But from the lineage that I come from, um, the women's circles we facilitate are meant to be safe spaces for women to reconnect back, back with themselves. And there are so many different ways and so many different dynamics that we can use to do that. But the way I do it personally, I like to just anchor a little bit with the use of astrology. And, and, and I, can, I can explain a little bit why. Because the feminine energy and women and the moon, it's all connected, right? We women have 28-day cycles, menstrual cycles. The moon is also a 28-day cycle. So we are intimately connected with the moon. And not just with the moon, but with everything on this planet Earth. And as humans, we have separated ourselves from our mother from our great mother which is earth our mother earth pachamama gaia however you want to call it and in the circle we want to come back to that nature and we use the elementals the fire the water the air and obviously the earth to process to process our emotions to process our experiences and it's just a space that is intention to be obviously confidential so whatever we share in the circle is meant to stay there um clearly if you want to share your story outside of the circle that's totally fine but we try to keep our sister's stories um confidential in that space and it's also a space free of judgment and free of advice and this stems from the remembrance that we have everything within us And the outside world makes us believe that we need to look for answers outside of us. But in reality, everything is within ourselves. It's within our being. All the answers that we seek, they are already within. And it's a matter of finding that connection with that space inside ourselves where we can find all these answers and we can start remembering who we truly are beyond all the programming all the societal things that we get thrown with every day and all the expectations also from the outside world so it is a safe space to just be it's it's so simple it's a safe space to just be I love doing that work. Mm-hmm. It it certainly shows that you love it. And it was, I've been to quite a few women's circles and unintentionally held some through her drive years ago when I first started the podcast. And it's amazing how quickly um, strangers feel so, so familiar and comfortable, right? It just feels, it's beautiful, the vulnerability and that women bring in and 
Some women seem to be like happy and joyous. Others are really going through something very challenging for them. And others show up and they're kind of like, I don't know what I'm doing here, but find a little breakthrough. It's just so absolutely beautiful. And I love it. Um, so through, through these circles and just through um, the work that you're doing, uh, how do you help promote people to, to do shadow work? And, and what is shadow work? Shadow work is one, I think it's one of the most powerful practices um, there is out there um, or in there, in there, <laughs> somewhere mm. in there. Um, and the way I learned it was through lots of journaling. Nowadays, I because I've gone in a shamanic path, I have other tools that help me as a facilitator to help people meet that part of themselves through um, shamanic journeys and visualization. But back in the old days, um, I learned it through journaling. Um, I remember my teacher would always give us journal prompts in her circles that we're all related to our shadow side because we are light, but we are also shadow. And, and in my yoga classes, now I say the light and the darkness in me sees and deeply honors the light and darkness in you because I want to raise awareness of the fact that we are both because, because resisting the shadow side of ourselves brings anxiety and brings depression because we are saying no to an integral part of our being. So how I do it in, for example, in Unbecoming, which is my signature online program, which is all women's circle, four circles, four weeks, um, one month together, is that we will do um, journal prompts to start discovering our shadow. And our shadow is merely that part that is hard to see. So think, if you're listening right now, think of all the experiences that were hard to process from the time that you were a child and, and if we wanted to go really deep, we can go even beyond that and go to the moment where your mom was in your grandma's womb because you were also there, because you are part of your mom. So you, the three of you were all together. So from there, what experiences, what um, memories can you remember that feel heavy? within you and and this work is hard it's it is hard and we we resist it and we we don't want to do it but when you start thinking and you remember that all of those experiences made you who you are today you are capable of loving them and accepting them and really embracing them as part of who you are so Shadow work has been an amazing, amazing practice in my personal life. And that's why I hold on very tight to it. Um, the other day I was talking to someone and she was mentioning that she has a voice in her head that tells her to do things. Things that she she doesn't really want to do, but still that voice is very loud in her head. And that voice is part of your shadow. If you have a voice inside your head telling or maybe telling you things about yourself that are not true, that is part of your shadow. So starting to listen to that voice, knowing that it's part of you, but that you can transform it also. But and this is a very, very powerful saying that I love. And I think I said it in the circle when you, where you and I were together. Um, the only way out is through. So in order to transform that voice, how do you start actually being receptive to it? Because that is the only way that you can transform it. And that sure. is shadow work. 
Okay. And when you say like receptive to it, what does it mean? Just acknowledging the thought? Yes. First, first being able to listen to it and sit with it. And then what is that voice telling you about yourself or about perhaps someone else? In, in, in this case, in this example, she's saying, this voice tells me to say something to my partner that is cruel. But if you are saying so something cruel to someone else, what is it saying about yourself? Where is that where is that pattern rooted? Because we are very easy to point to others. But when we try to point to others, that is also saying something about ourselves. So so how do how do we how do we start shifting, you know, the blame and start working with ourselves? Because that is the only way that we can change this world. We won't ever change the world by pointing others, blaming others, or trying to help others to figure out their life, you know? And that's, that's a lot of what so many people try to do because that's, that gives them external validation because I'm helping someone. Well, help yourself first, you know? And you are doing the best, the best job you can do. And you undo, you're doing a, you're giving humanity a gift by focusing on yourself. But there's so much deprogramming that we need to do around that very simple thought. Mm -hmm. um, I 100% agree. And I'm curious, what are the um, rituals, practices, daily, weekly, monthly, annually? that you do to like root back into um, yourself? Mm -hmm. The first thing that I, that comes to mind is definitely having a morning practice that um, sets up for success any day. And, and it can be, you know, When we say a morning practice, we're like, oh, it has to be long and it has to be very robust. And it doesn't really have to be very robust. And, and as women also, doing ritual at the same time that we are living, you know, when you're doing the dishes or when you're cooking, everything can sort of become a ritual. So how do we start rit ritualizing the mundane also? But going back to that morning practice, it can go from five minutes of just like sitting there if you like to sit and meditate, which let me tell you, it did not work for me until I started to work on my emotions. And, and we can talk more about that. But um, it can be just sitting there and meditating for five minutes. It can be singing mantras or singing some music that you like. It can be even dancing. Dancing brings you or any sort of embodied movement that brings you back into your body. Or it can be going for a morning walk, you know? Even walking your dog can be your morning ritual. I, I like to incorporate writing because I feel like... Um, my as i write more things start to come up and sometimes when i just sit there things don't come up really i'm just trying to focus on whatever i'm focusing on my womb or my heart and and thoughts won't flow but when i write that my mind starts just going 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 and i can actually get it all out whatever it is that i'm trying to get out into the paper So your morning practice is very, very important to set up for success in your day and to start your day grounded also. And as far as other practices that keep me grounded is always nature. I need nature. Even now that I live in Dallas, it's a city full of concrete. I always find a green space or some space where there's water. Like I'm in Turtle Creek. I live in Turtle Creek right now. And five minutes from here, I pay a premium, but five minutes from here, I have a park that I can go and I can just lay there if I want to read or I want to write or I just want to sit there in my tree. And 
I also offer my blood and that's a little a little more into what I do in in the womb wisdom space but offering my blood has become a very very grounding um ritual for me that I do every month and this is all connected to the moon and I am really connected specifically to the full moon so I do my rituals on the full moon and and even on the new moon I also do a little ritual to set up my intentions for um the new cycle and 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 I think understanding that life and death can coexist and bringing that into your ritual whatever ritual you have and if you don't have any whatever ritual you're wanting to start um has been a really safe safe space for me to just surrender knowing that change will always be there and we get to change and continue changing and shifting and doing things differently we don't need to stay static you know again a lot of deprogramming a lot of deprogramming <laughs> so um what's um what's a blood offering mm. so back in the day women women would do this And we think, oh, this is all new. This is all super old. You know, this, all of this, the, the, where the women circles come from and the blood rituals and all this, this is old. Like church is new. This is all very, very old. And, and back in the day, women would do this. Women would offer Um, their blood all together when they were in in their red tents all together just being there resting and connecting with each other and connecting with the source and receiving all these messages and oracles and downloads from the mother and and so when I do my blood offering and and I've heard many many variations of how people do this um I am, it's my way of returning to the earth. It's my way of going back to my mother, you know? And when I, when I offer my blood, I just say, thank you. Thank you for holding us. Thank you for, and I, I get um, emotional because it's always an emotional moment. Every month, as many times as I do it, it's always emotional. I just say, Thank you for holding us. Thank you for supporting us. And please continue guiding me back to you. So it's a very intimate moment. And I always do it in the same tree here in the park. And that tree and I have a relationship, a very deep relationship. But it's, it's a way, again, of grounding and of <clears throat> honoring, honoring our mother. Um, there's There's God, and that's a very very masculine figure but for fem for the feminine and for women to soften into um ourselves we also need the great mother and connecting to your blood and connecting and offering this blood to our mother is a great way of <clears throat> deepening that connection mm, that's so fascinating mm. um If you could go back in time and give a younger you some words of wisdom, what age would you visit and what would you say? Hmm. Huh. I always see that six, seven, eight year old me um, with so many responsibilities. Um, for my younger sister and my mom, mothering my mom and all this. And I, I would just tell her, it's okay, you'll get through it. And you are so, so loved. You are so, so loved. That's what I would say. Mm, that's really beautiful. Absolutely. 
Mm. Well, Nicole, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Um, is there anything else you'd like to share and maybe where everyone can find you and your circles online and in person? Oh, thank you so, so much for for having me and for having this conversation. Definitely going into our story as many times as we do it. Um, it it just shows us a deeper layer of of healing and of just being grateful that we that we are here and we get to do this this work and we get to share all this so thank you first of all um and then for anyone that wants to find me i am on instagram at woomoon healing w-o-m-o-o-n healing and my website is the same thing www.womanhealing.com and i am looking forward to connecting with many of you i have online offerings I have in-person women's circles happening in Dallas right now. And I also work one-on-one -on -one with people. I'm doing all the things. So I would love, love to connect um, with, with you that are listening on the other side. And um, let's see, how do I want to end it? Hmm. Just know that you are so supported, so supported wherever you are. And even if if it doesn't feel that way right now, know that it, you are so supported. You are so loved. You are so held by our mother and that feminine energy that lives within you will lead the way if you let it. So surrender and just keep being open and so it is oh thank uh -oh. you so much for having me <laughs> thank you that was beautiful I felt very um I closed my eyes as you were saying that and I just felt like I was being suspended in a big hug so it was very beautiful <laughs> oh I feel that I feel that so so deep thank you so so much Cynthia I appreciate you my pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Stay tuned for another episode in two weeks. Thanks for listening to Her Drive with Cindy Cramblett. If you want to know more about today's guest or know a fascinating woman you'd love for me to interview, please see the show notes, visit Instagram or her-drive.com. And please, 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 if you love the show, leave a review on iTunes. Thanks for riding along and subscribe to join our next woman and Her Drive to success.